Dr. Sone, President Jeff Chinkone, next president, Dr. Sidhu, past president and the master of arranging the conferences. She had done many. The, in fact, long way I had the same ones, it was in the 90s, it was organized by her. Dr. Lumba, who was the uh, Everybody would agree that a wonderful job by organizing such a nice conference. And I am standing before you today. We heard a lecture in the morning, the lectures of about the clinical medicine, the cost of the investigations, the basic science of the history taking and investigation. And therefore, I also chose one of the topics that the common clinical problem in thyroid disorder which we face day in and day out. And let us have a rapid review. The most of the things we are this is a puberty goiter. The often <coughs> the patients come about this and the concerned family members bring usually they are the girls or the boys are also brought and they are brought because of the a little swelling near the neck. Sometimes even the teacher or the classmates, they point it out that look, you have got a swelling over there and with this and the child has got no complaint. And this is due to the hyperplasia of the gland in face of the excessive demands of the growth of the body at the puberty time. All the tests normally being done, T3, T4 and TSH, they are normal. And how to treat? Many times we have seen that the colossal IOD in long back used to be prescribed, it has got no role. The parents have to be convinced that this is not the problem. They are worried about two things. Would the treatment be lifelong? The answer is no. The second thing, surgery is not needed. So if we are able to convince them about these two points, the surgery is not needed and the treatment will not be lifelong, many of them will be satisfied. And then the third question, how long will this last? And this is a little difficult thing, and it is because this will last for about six months to two to three years. And for that period, you can give the low doses of the thyroxine, usually 12.5 to 25. And how to monitor? The should be monitored with the TSH, and the TSH should be brought between 1 and 3. But remember that they should not be become symptomatically thyrotoxic. They have to be treated for 1 to 3 years. One question was being raised in the last conferences. If we do not treat, we have seen that if we do not treat, it takes a little longer period. And secondly, the patient and the parents, they are more worried that nothing has been done. And therefore, with the low dose treatment for the puberty goiter, it takes a little shorter time in disappearance. And if you give talk from one to three years, it completely subsides, and then the goiter uh, goes off, and the treatment doesn't continue for the whole. This is another report high cases and the T3, T4 are normal. And the answer everybody knows, and the answer is subclinical hypothyroid. Many patients come with the report, they have been advised, is our manapna, a karagia tarot, very family meta, very sister kotha, very neighbor kotha, very very bahanani hat. And so the normal T3, T4 with a raised cases, the prevalence is 4 to 15 percent. Fairly large number of people have got this. And if we treat this, the treatment is required as it decreases the cardiovascular risk. It improves the disc lipidemia. Many of these patients have got a high cholesterol level. And sometimes some non-specific symptoms like fatigue, constipation and depression, they are also being relieved by treating these patients. So, if on a question, few years back, it is like the IgD treatment, should it be treated or not. Similarly, subclinical hypothyroidism, I would like to add one point, if they 
report, any symptoms will be reports that it should not be thought of a subclinical, but if there is any symptom, even if they have got the symptoms of the fatigue or constipation or high cholesterol, they must be treated. And the follow-up of these patients, we see that few patients remain in subclinical hypothyroidism for years together, few become euthyroid, and some of them, they become frank hypothyroid. And the conversion from subclinical to frank hypothyroidism is like IgG. Two to five percent of subclinical hypothyroidism become hypothyroid every year. So they require to whom to treat. If they are pregnant, if the anti-TPO is positive, if they are symptomatic, they should be treated. And they have to be treated with a low dose of thyroxine and the TSH. The TSH has to be monitored every six to 12 months once it comes down to the normal. The, especially if the family history of CVS is there or if dyslipidemia is present, they have to be treated. The treatment has to be given in the low dose, 12.5 or 25. Follow them up and after 4 to 6 weeks, get a TSA treated, bring it normal between 1 and 3 and then that has to be continued. Another common very clinical problem, a patient is on thyroxine and comes to take her advice. And he comes for the advice and the report is the TSA is high. Now, if the TSH is high, very simple, you increase the dose of thyroxine and the repeat TSH after 6 weeks. And once the TSH comes normal, that is between 1 and 3, and clinically, something the patient has to be followed clinically as well. And if the patient is clinically okay, the get the TSH done after every 6 months or 1 year. Another patient is on thyroxine and the TSH is low. And if there are symptoms of anxiety or little gabrahat, tachycardia or hyperdefecation, the patient complained that I go for the motion for the last few weeks, three or four times in a day, they are not good, that is the hyperdefecation. So if any of these things are there and the patient is on thyroxine and the case is on the lower side, you reduce the dose of the thyroxine. Usually you make it half or you can even stop it and we follow the TSH after 6 weeks. Seeing the TSH, you adjust the dose that what the proper of the thyroxine dose should be given to them. So we have seen that with the thyroxine, if the TSH is high, we have to decrease the dose. If the TSH is low, we have to decrease the dose of thyroxine. The third patient comes in which the TSH is normal and the patient brings the report that I am taking the thyroxine for last many months or for many years and my report is this normal. Now what to do? Patient has got no history, no past history, no past prescription, nothing. Only I am taking 50 or 100 microgram and my TSA is normal. And then the, 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 the physician at times is in dilemma what to do. So I have invited this thing that you reduce the dose if the person is perfectly euthyroid and there is no past history, whatever dose the patient is taking, you reduce the dose to the half or by 25 and follow it after 6 weeks. After following, if the TSH goes high, if the TSH goes high, it means this is a patient of a Hashimoto thyroiditis and this will require thyroxine lifelong. So that has to be explained to the patient without going any into the detailed investigation by reducing the dose of the TSH, if, uh, by reducing the dose of thyroxine, if the TSH goes high, it means this is the patient of the Hashimoto thyroiditis and she will require thyroxine lifelong. But on reducing the dose, if the TSH remains normal after 6 to 8 weeks, then on that the TSH is normal, patient is completely alright, you stop, you again after, you have repeated the, uh, reduced the dose and the TSH is normal, either you further reduce the dose or you completely stop the TSH and you follow them after 6 to 12 weeks. After 8 to 12 weeks, if the TSH still remains normal, it means this is a patient of a follow-up patient 
of a viral thyroiditis or probably postpartum thyroiditis and she doesn't require thyroxin anymore. She was once being prescribed and as it is the customary to the persons, people are aware she is taking the thyroxin to the thyroxin to the thyroxin they are taking the thyroxin though sometimes the lower doses 25 or 50 and if by reducing the thyroxin the cases remain normal patient is clinically okay you have to you can stop it you can follow it up and probably this will be a patient in whom the thyroxin will not be required and you can stop thyroxin altogether in that patient I am just elaborating about the viral thyroiditis it is not an uncommon entity mildly enlarged and painful thyroid and this is the clinical history they become the thyrotoxic for few months and then they become hypothyroid for few months and in this hypothyroid period the thyroxin was being started in this patient and then they become the thyroid and they remain sometimes the thyroid lifelong so this was the patient in whom they were being prescribed and she was continuing taking it you can on the normal TSH you can reduce the thyroxin and follow the patient while the Hashimoto thyroiditis which is the commonest cause one thing to remember that the symptoms come very gradually and most of the patients they never develop goiter and therefore the occasionally pain is goiter is there most of the Hashimoto they never develop goiter and they develop symptoms very gradually which they attribute to the aging at the 40 years or 50 years mild letharginess, mild body ache they take it because of the aging probably or the overwork they are having the symptoms and they sometimes they complain to the doctor sometimes they come to the family members only with these complaints and once you see them you follow them up with the T3 and T4 and TSA these are the patients and these are the patients who will require the thyroxine the only one thing uh, the, the, the one thing for the uh, Hashimoto thyroiditis that usually the patient will require thyroxin lifelong and at a later date after a few years the dose may increase so follow up after one year the patient has to be explained because it is a gradual destruction of the thyroid gland that will keep on occurring so the dose in a Hashimoto thyroiditis or the hypothyroid patient if they are taking 50 or 75 after 5 or 10 years the dose may escalate from 75 to 100 or from 100 to 125. Should be screening, should be done for the hypothyroidism because 10% female by the age of 50 and 10% male by the age of 60, they become hypothyroid. Still, the people are not agreeing on this, but it has been seen the American Association of Clinical Endocrinology, they recommend that in the child bearing women, the before pregnancy or during the first trimester, the DSL should be estimated. In pregnancy, the dose requirement goes up and it goes up very early in the fifth week of gestation. So, the hypothyroid patient, most of them they are aware about that, they come to the doctor and once they are become pregnant, the DSL should be repeated every month during pregnancy and usually the dose goes 25 to 30 percent up during pregnancy and that should be followed down. Another entity, postpartum thyroiditis. This is the similar like the viral thyroiditis. The prevalence is fairly common, we put it in our college also. We saw the prevalence 5 to 10 percent and typically there is a like the feature of viral thyroiditis, there is a period of thyrotoxic phase for 2 to 3 months and that thyrotoxic phase is on account of the release of a thyroxin hormone and then comes the thyroxin the thyroid gland is exhausted the thyroxin hormones go low and they become hypothyroid phase for a few months and then they become the thyroid these are another lady who after delivery they, they receive thyroxin and they continue the thyroxin for some sometimes for years or well. so the hypothyroid phase they do not require any treatment but the hypothyroid phase only propranolol is sufficient and they do not require the carbamazole but the hypothyroid phase should be treated with thyroxine and followed up with TSH. Remember, um, this is a, we have seen anxiety and depression after delivery could be a part of thyroiditis 
but frequently female childbirth and male adjustment in the family are blamed for them and they are not being investigated, they must be investigated for thyroiditis and if it becomes like that, so the thyrotoxic phase should be treated with the proper love and the hypothyroid phase should be treated with the thyroid. If the dose is being missed, another common question, if one dose is missed, you can increase the two doses second day, if the two doses are missed, you can take the three tablets on the third day, but if three doses are missed, then you have to continue the regular dose. This is another a common thing. Another question being asked, when should I take it? <coughs> the answer is an empty stomach 30 minutes before the calorie B. The omeprazole, which is also being taken many times with the empty stomach, it little hinders the absorption of the thyroid. So better if it is being taken with the empty stomach and ideally it should be taken. But if the person forgets about this, they doesn't take, I have, I have forgotten about this, then they should be advised, the isomastic bath will be needed. Better to take it rather than if you are alimenting kaya, it will go down, as an adult. Hypothyroidism in elderly is also fairly common now because of the greater investigations being done and if the coronary artery disease must be ruled out in the patient and if they are suffering from this then the thyroxine has to be started with the low dose and the angina has must be treated because if there is a little slightest doubt that has to be treated first and then the thyroxine has to be added in a very low dose and the dose has to be escalated very gradually otherwise the, the ischemic heart disease or the angina will be treated. Another common corollary in the hypothyroidism and the other. In the hyperthyroidism, I think I got another five minutes. Yeah. You can have any yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this part about the hyperthyroidism, I have added, this is usually the, 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 my one lecture, but I have added certain few slides with some of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Bansal, they, 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 once they are that you, you are not mentioning about the hyperthyroidism because few, many of the patients have come in the clinical practice about this and they some of their common corollaries. And the common thing is low TSH and the increased T4 and TSH is the dump for the uh, rare disease. The beta blockers control the adrenergic symptoms or the slow propanol has to be given. If the patient is suffering from a bronchial asthma or a respiratory problem, Dilkiazin is the answer in place of the doctor. The Dilkiazin should be given and that will be taken care of. will be working almost the same, not as good as the propanolol, but will be working as the propanolol for this. The anti drugs effect comes after 4 to 6 weeks. So usually the propanolol has to be given for about 4 to 6 weeks. <coughs> Only then, once the effect comes, the two drugs are there for that, the carbamazole and the propylthyroxine. The advantage, the carbamazole has definitely gone an age. We all agree with this. And the advantage is that the maintenance dose is the OD dose. Once the patient becomes euthyroid, the carbamazole can be given in the OD dose. The advantage of propylthyroxine is only two. One, it can be given in the pregnancy. It is not that it has a cross, it crosses the placenta, it is there in the brain also, but the concentration in relation to the carbamazole is very low. So for the pregnancy and the lactating mother, the answer is propylthyroxine. And second, in the thyrotoxic crisis, the propylthyroxine, it inhibits the conversion from T4 to B3. So drug of choice, in the thyroidoxic crisis, it provides thyroxin. It has only only two advantage in comparison to the carbamazole. Otherwise, in most of the patients, almost in all the patients, the answer is the carbamazole which you take. The, I have mentioned this, the PT is preferred in pregnancy and lactation, and the only thing, the PTC is given in the thyroidoxic crisis. You follow the patients, we give both beta blockers and carbamazole 
follow them clinically and the follow up should be with a pulse rate, weight gain and the other symptoms like tremors. The eye signs will not regress. The eye signs will not regress and they have not to be followed by following the patient on this. Hyperdefication, tachycardia, perspiration, the weight, they have to be followed every three to four days. And once the patient clinically improves, you get it before that. And another thing, you withdraw the beta blockers. If by withdrawing the beta blockers, the pulse does not go up, it means the effect of the carbonazole has come up, you can entirely withdraw the beta blocker and now you can go ahead with the getting of free T4 being done. And which should be done after every 6 to 8 weeks. Now the second question comes. The T4 has become normal. Patient is too tired, the T4 is normal. Now what to do? Now with this, once the T4 comes normal, we get a TSH time. If the TSH is low, now this low TSH, one should not be encouraged to further increase the dose of the carbonazole because this is a pituitary insult and once the person becomes too thyroid, the TSA remains suppressed for months together. For, I am repeating, for months together. So once the T4 comes normal and the TSA is low, do not increase the dose of the carbonazole and follow the patient after 2 to 3 months. Once the TSH is also normal and 3 T4 is normal and TSH is normal, fine. You can follow the patient every 3 months. Third condition, if 3 T4 is normal but the TSH has gone up, now what to do? If the TSH has gone up, it means the patient is clinically, the biochemically developing little hypothyroidism on and off of the carbamazole. And therefore, with this carbamazole, you add a low dose of the thyroid. So, once the T4 comes normal, you follow them with the TSH, and these are the three corollaries. If the TSH is low, follow them up. If the TSH is normal, follow them up. If the TSH is high, add a little thyroid. And therefore, with the carbamazole, you have to give a little thyroid. The how long to follow? The drug should be given for one to two years, then you taper in them gradually. And after stopping after two years, you follow them for three monthly for relapse. And the relapse, the first year should be every three months and then every every year. Fifty percent patients of the graves relapse in five years. Fifty percent patients patients relapse after five years. So a close follow-up has to be explained and that should be done. And recurrence has to be treated. Either again you have to treat by the drugs or you can send patient for the radioactive therapy. I think.